Today we're going to talk about a place that challenges humanity with all the unpredictability of nature, the Drake Passage. Many ships wishing to pass from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean use the Panama Canal for speed and safety. But before this canal opened in 1914, ships had to chart their course through the Drake Passage, the most dangerous sea route in the world, and hundreds embarked on this challenging journey. The Drake Passage is approximately 800 kilometers wide, roughly 1,000 kilometers long, and has an average depth of 3,400 meters. This depth and width represent a major challenge for sailors. So far, more than 800 ships have sunk in the Drake Passage, and that's just the ones that have been recorded. Approximately 20,000 people have lost their lives, and unfortunately, these deaths continue to this day. For example, in 2022, a giant wave hit a passenger ship traveling from Antarctica to Argentina. This horrific event resulted in one death and four injuries. An enormous wall of water crashed into the ship, tossing passengers around and shattering some of the exterior windows. Some rooms were flooded, while the walls of others were destroyed. It's not just giant waves that can kill you in the Drake Passage. Here, nature challenges humans with all its might. An average ship spends about 48 hours traveling from one end of the Drake Passage to the other. But these 48 hours are filled with memories that sailors and passengers will never forget for the rest of their lives. Sailors who successfully navigate the passage say they always remember the challenges they faced during this time and the immense power of nature. Some say they have never felt anything like it anywhere else in the world. One passenger says, I felt like a wet, dirty sock in a washing machine on a 36-hour spin cycle. I had never experienced seasickness before, but this journey was a real test. People on cruise ships say they can't even eat without constantly holding their plates and glasses. Powerful waves slide plates across the table, and special sticky mats are used, but they don't always work. You practically need eight hands to eat. Also, you have to hold onto the chair and table because they slide too. Under these conditions, even eating turns into a major struggle. People often experience nausea due to the severe shaking, so vomit bags are hung in common areas on the ship. The ship's staff constantly strives to help passengers adapt to these challenging conditions. Everything on the tables, including laptops, must be secured. Items must be tied down, and loose items should be placed in drawers. Otherwise, these items could be thrown around in the next wave. You have to hold on to handles or poles to move around the ship. Otherwise, it's impossible to move. Even climbing or descending stairs or opening and closing doors requires great effort to avoid injury. The rocking of the ship is so violent that even normally, simple daily tasks become a serious challenge. There are even stories of people having to tie themselves to their beds to sleep while crossing the passage. The ship interacts differently with the waves, resulting in periodic vertical acceleration. Because of this, a person's weight almost drops to zero and then doubles a few seconds later. Sleeping becomes impossible in such conditions. The acceleration causes the person to almost float above the bed or be suddenly pressed into it. The only solution is is to secure yourself to the bed. Some sailors and passengers say this method is the only thing that helps them sleep. The Drake Passage lies between Cape Horn, the southernmost tip of South America, and Livingston Island in the South Shetland Islands. Simply put, it's the gap between Antarctica and South America. There are two other passages at the southern tip of South America, the Strait of Magellan and the Beagle Channel. However, these passages have narrowing routes that leave little room for maneuver. Unpredictable winds and tidal currents make these straits nearly impassable. That's why most sailing ships prefer the Drake Passage, which offers hundreds of kilometers of open water. The passage is named after the English explorer and privateer who worked for the government, Francis Drake. In 1578, during his expedition against Spain, he passed through the Strait of Magellan to the Pacific Ocean, where a violent storm pushed him south. 
One ship sank in the storm, one had to return to England, but the third reached the Drake Passage. Thus, the British learned that there was open sea south of South America. This discovery marked a significant turning point in maritime history, opening up new routes for sailors ever since. The incredibly rough waters of the passage are one of the reasons why people didn't set foot on Antarctic soil until the 19th century. It was really difficult to get there. First of all, the wind. Getting caught in a storm while crossing the Drake Passage is a bit of a chance, as there is no specific storm season there. It can happen at any moment. This is because the Drake Passage is located at the point where the world's three largest oceans, the Pacific, Atlantic, and Southern Oceans, meet. This location causes severe cyclones to form. Cold water from Antarctica meets relatively warm ocean water, and suddenly a cyclone appears. This area, covering an area of approximately 1,000 kilometers, constantly produces dangerous storms. In addition to the temperature difference in the water, the lack of land masses is also an important factor. Since there are no land masses in the Southern Ocean surrounding Antarctica, winds can easily circulate around the planet. This makes the Drake Passage one of the windiest and waviest regions in the world. You might say it's windy in the North Atlantic too, and you'd be right. But in the Northern Hemisphere, similar winds are blocked by large land masses, so they can't gain speed. In the Drake Passage, the wind blows at 50 to 70 kilometers per hour. If the wind is in the direction the ship needs to go, it provides an advantage. But otherwise, it causes serious difficulties. The wind also brings with it giant waves. The largest waves in the Drake Passage reach heights of 12 meters. Some sources mention waves of 20 meters or higher. These waves hit any ship in the strait in succession. And with Antarctica so close, sailors also have to contend with the cold. Experienced sailors say the Drake Passage only has two moods, Drake Shake and Drake Lake. The latter is rarely seen, while the former is almost constant. The ship's portholes quickly begin to resemble washing machine lids due to the foam from the high waves. This means a challenging experience for everyone on board. Sailors say that traveling in these conditions requires physical and mental endurance. Another danger of this region is the constant rocking. Usually, before entering the passage, the captain advises everyone on board to take seasickness medication. Even Charles Darwin, an experienced traveler who circumnavigated Cape Horn, experienced severe seasickness. Under these conditions, seasickness becomes inevitable, and that's not even including the giant waves. As we mentioned earlier, one person recently lost their life in the Drake Passage due to a rogue wave. Rogue waves are waves that are at least twice the height of the surrounding sea level. Although their formation mechanisms are still not fully understood, researchers believe that these elevations are formed by the merging of smaller waves. This could be due to strong surface winds or changes in currents. The Drake Passage is home to some of the strongest ocean currents in the world. Experts describe the strait as a melting pot where strong ocean currents carry carbon, including that accumulated by plankton. This carbon sinks to the depths and stays there for centuries. But plankton and carbon aren't that important. What matters is that the Drake Passage is the narrowest passage for the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, the strongest current on Earth. This current circulates around Antarctica in a continuous flow, creating a barrier like a moat around a castle. This barrier means that more than 130 million cubic meters of water per second are carried through the Drake Passage by the current. This volume is more than 100 times the total flow of all the rivers on the planet. The Antarctic Circumpolar Current stretches for more than 20,000 kilometers and is considered the largest in the world. Because the current encounters no resistance from land, it allows water flows to break off and generate tremendous power, affecting even the largest ships. Winds, waves, currents. In short, it's clear why the Drake Passage is considered deadly. What's even more surprising is that people were crossing it in the 16th century. Ships were much less durable then than they are now. When maritime technology was not yet developed, 
brave sailors dared to cross these dangerous waters. For them, it was a journey into the unknown. In December 2019, a group of elite athletes successfully crossed the Drake Passage in a purely human-powered boat. The rowing team worked in shifts. Three rowers rowed for 90 minutes, then switched and so on for 24 hours a day. They covered more than 1,000 kilometers in 12 days in a specially designed boat. Around them were icy ocean, giant waves, wind, lack of sleep, constant rocking, and nausea. These brave people decided that the most important thing was to keep rowing. This extraordinary achievement went down in history as a testament to human will and endurance. There is also a legend of a ghost ship in the Drake Passage. According to the story, a schooner named Jenny set sail from White Island in 1822 and froze in the Drake Passage in 1823. The ship was allegedly seen again in 1840. The crew of a whaling ship called Hope are said to have found the passengers frozen. The coldness of Antarctica had perfectly preserved the bodies. However, there is no solid evidence for this story. It is considered a legend. Still, such stories fuel sailors' imaginations and respect for the sea. In real life, ships regularly pass through the Drake Passage despite the existence of the Panama Canal. Yes, the canal is faster, safer, and cheaper, less fuel consumption and operating costs. However, only 37% of the world's maritime transport can pass through the Panama Canal. The remaining megaships have to go around Cape Horn and face the Drake Passage because they cannot fit through the canal's dimensions. They take on this challenge and come out the other side. In the days of sailing ships, old navigation equipment, and primitive weather forecasting, the Drake Passage was certainly a dangerous waterway. Even today, it remains dangerous for small vessels or sailboats. But for large modern ships carrying passengers, such as expedition ships or cruise ships, the strait is no longer a matter of life and death. Crossing the Drake Passage can still be unforgettable and physically demanding. But ships are better protected against waves and wind. They are also equipped with advanced stabilizing mechanisms, and sailors use modern technology for navigation and sailing. It's no longer the same as battling waves and currents in an old-fashioned ship. Yes, the risk still exists, but now it's in the form of rare and tragic accidents. For example, incidents like the rogue wave that hit a passenger ship in 2022. But such events remind us of the importance of modern technology and safety measures. The last major shipwreck recorded in the Drake Passage occurred in 1819. At that time, the Spanish ship San Telmo sank while carrying reinforcements to Peru during the War of Independence, and 644 people lost their lives. However, this was a wooden-hulled sailing ship, much more fragile compared to modern ships. The Drake Passage also protects our planet. We mentioned that carbon accumulates on the ocean floor thanks to currents and the Drake Passage. This is a great advantage for the climate because carbon is drawn from the atmosphere. But the Drake Passage has another important role for the planet, keeping Antarctica cold. Without a land bridge to South America, it is much more difficult for warm air to reach Antarctica. The Drake Passage, with its icy winds, is a truly cold region and this cooling effect helps maintain our planet's balance. If there were no Drake Passage, Antarctica would be much warmer, and the 30 million square kilometer ice sheet would melt. In this case, the level of the world's oceans would rise by more than 50 meters, coastal cities would be submerged, and a global disaster would occur. Fortunately, thanks to the Drake Passage, this scenario has not come to pass. Therefore, it is important to remember that this dangerous and challenging passage actually plays a critical role in maintaining the balance of our planet.